Hey everybody, Matt Williams, Matt Williams Golf. And today we're doing another iron review. This today is gonna to be the Ping Blueprint Irons. If you've watched the What's In My Bag series and you know that I'm currently hitting the TaylorMade RSI 2s, well, I'm down here where I bought those very same irons. I'm down here at Fiddler's Green in Eugene, Oregon, testing out new irons. Now, if you've also watched the What's In My Bag episode or any of a lot of my previous footage, you know that I'm looking in the market for new irons. I'm looking for something where I'm not gonna sacrifice distance and I'm gonna increase spin. Well, I'm very optimistic about these ping blueprints. Now, I've never ever had pings in the bag. In fact, I've admittedly really never been a ping fan. But somehow, the ping brand and the ping marketing is just starting to grow on me more and more and more. So I'm really excited to try out the ping blueprint irons. We're gonna be testing out three irons today and stacking them up against the very same three irons that I currently have in the bag. And that's gonna be pitching wedge, seven iron and five iron. And we'll see how those numbers compare to what I currently have in the bag. And maybe even talk about how they stack up to the other irons that I've tested thus far. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started down here at Fiddler's Green with the Ping Blueprint Irons. We're going to start with the Pitching Wedge. These are all right on, right down the middle, guys. Just a slight fade. 123 carry, 127 total. 83 mile an hour club head speed. But here's what I like. Spin rate back up to 6,000. So, you know, with the RSI 2s, when I put a better swing on it, you know, that RPM isn't getting above 4,000 even with pitching wedge. Here, a nice swing on the ball, and I'm getting up over 6,000 RPM, which is pretty good for me. Oh my. Wow. Clip that one, 131 carry, 137 total, again, pitching wedge. That's funny, height 120 feet. Spin rate was down back down in that 4,000 range. Interesting. Dead straight, these are all going dead straight. From a dispersion standpoint, these are exceptional. That one was 133 carry, 138 total. 116 high apex, 84 club head speed. I think what we're seeing here is a result of me getting a little more comfortable with this iron. Here we go. I'm going to move up to 7 iron here real soon. That's good again. Hmm. 131 carry, 138 total. That sounds familiar. Dead straight, 85 mile an hour club head speed, apex 121. <clears throat> so this is one or one degree weaker than my existing pitching wedge and yet the distance is the same i will say this i'm surprised that this is for a blade on my pitching wedge that spin rate except for the occasional one where it jumps high the spin rate is really comparable with what i'm hitting my pitching uh getting with my existing pitching wedge So I'm floating average carry with this pitching wedge. Sure looks like it's averaging around 130. Dead 
Dead straight again. Yeah, 132 carry. Spin rate 4200. I, hmm. I'm shocked. I'm just kind of dumbfounded right now that I, with a blade, I'm not getting that spin rate to jump a bit. All the other metrics are really, really, really good though. Um, I'm surprised my efficiency as my swing has improved, my smash factor efficiency has gone way up. Yeah, I mean, these are great. I think it's time to move on to seven iron. 131 carry, 137 total. Spin rate still remains around 4,000, which is a little bit disappointing. I think it's time to make the jump to seven iron. So, uh, interesting results so far with the pitching wedge. Uh, carry was exceptional. Uh, shot dispersion was unbelievable. They all right down the line, landed them right on the flag that I was aiming at. Uh, average carry now with the, pl uh, with the pitching wedge, with the ping blueprint, was floating at about 131 yards, 132 yards, and an average spin rate of just over 4,000. Now, that spin rate concerns me. I love the shot dispersion, that's great. I love the carry and uh, the total distance, that's wonderful. But I really kind of expected that spin rate to be a little higher. Well, we're moving on to the seven iron now, and we're gonna give this a run and see how this compares. Now, um, you know, I've been working on my swing quite a bit. So the numbers with my current RSI 2 on 7 iron have changed uh, and have increased. Before, with my 7 iron, I was hoping to average carry about 160 yards. Well, now that average carry has gone up to about 168. However, that spin rate on my RSI 2 still hovers around mid 3000 to 4000 4100 rpm and again if you've watched my prior videos you know that's something that i really dislike about my where i'm at with my current irons now as another note all the ping uh, blueprint irons that i'm going to be testing have the dynamic gold 120 gram shaft in them and they also have this golf pride align mcc grip now i don't like this grip if i get the ping blueprints i'm going to be getting a different grip However, I am enjoying the feel of this shaft. All right, let's give the seven iron a run. Hmm. One thing of note, I should be prepared to sacrifice some distance. This is gonna be two degrees weaker than my current RSI 2. So, a sacrifice in distance is expected. Just a matter of how much. Or can I dial this in? That appeared pretty good. Felt pretty good. A little healy, actually. Still went straight. Perfectly straight, by the way. One, a little bit better carry, 157 carry, 164 total. Spin rate back up around 5,400 RPM. Here we go. Oh, that's one of the best swings I've had today. Really good. Holy moly, really good. Huh. So that was flushed for me, as seven irons go. 90 mile an hour club head speed. Um, yeah, so spin rate was 6,400, carry 161, total 167. Which is shorter than what I'm currently hitting right now. Let's keep going. Dude, you are the man. Thank you. 
Oh, that's, I think, pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, well, we're starting to get a little more, find a little more consistency here. 90 mile an hour club head speed, 163 carry, 170 total, 5,900 on the RPMs. Starting to get a little more comfortable with this ping eye blade, or blueprint. Yeah, here's one thing I will tell you as we wait for those numbers. I did not think that as an eight handicap, and just became single digit this year, did not think blades would be a ball I could hit or control. But the dispersion on these is unbelievable. 163 carry again, 168 total, 6,400 RPM, Apex 103. All these numbers are, I'm gonna call them so far good. Um, the, the distance isn't blowing my socks off, but so far it feels really good. I'm thankful that I could hit something like a blueprint here, which is obviously more like a, or is a blade. Yeah, pull that one just a hair. That's a golfer, not the club. Pull that one just a hair. 161 carry, 168 total, 6,200 RPM. Well, I'm finding the middle of the club face consistently. 90 mile an hour club head speed, 163 carry, 169 total, 6,400 RPMs. These numbers are starting to repeat themselves quite consistently. Shot this. Geez Louise, folks. I'm not how, sure how far, oh, okay, five yards. I got it. Okay, so from a shot dispersion standpoint, these are all within 10 yards right to left of one another which is really good because you got to think that a green is going to be bigger than 10 yards wide. Usually one would think. That was sweet. That felt great. Yep. Oh, a little shorter. Huh. Wow. That <laughs> that's funny. That felt the best out of the bunch. 158 carry. 162 total, 7,000 RPM. Look at that number, 7 iron. Yeah, baby. Now we're talking. Yeah. I mean, everything about that's going to be good. That wasn't my best swing, though. I'm sure if I watch this back. Wasn't my best swing. Yeah, and the numbers bear that out. 153. Okay, so here's something I'm going to say. Misses are really obvious with this club, the ping blueprint. And I mean really obvious. And there is a huge drop off on the numbers when I miss it to the tune of at least 10 yards, maybe even more like 12 on average. Now on the misses though, they still are right on the right line. They're totally dead straight. Every single one of these, my dispersion from a, uh, if you draw a straight line down there, the dispersion is still fantastic. But the dis distance wise, if you miss this, you are going to get pretty severely punished. Oh, that is gorgeous. So while we wait for those numbers to expand on that point, if you're a golfer, remember I'm an eight handicap. I actually didn't think blades were going to be an option for me. And that was a 162 carry, 167 total. My goodness, these are all on the same number. I honestly, I think I've collected enough data here, y'all. I really do, before I jump up to the five iron. But to expand on that point, if you're a golfer, it doesn't matter what handicap you are, that really is gonna depend on more forgiveness, this probably isn't the iron for you. Because you get punished with this thing if there's a miss. Now, I've been really lucky here to 
really not miss it but more than just a couple of times. Yeah, there's, what do you want to bet? And these are straight down the middle. 162 carry, 170 total. Spin rate, 6,400. I'm a broken record now. I think it's time to go to the five iron. All right, so five iron now. So what are my expectations with this five iron? I'm not sure yet, but I can tell you with my existing RSI 2, five iron I generally average in the low 90s for club head speed. And my carry is anywhere from, I'd say 193 to 197, maybe even sometimes 200 yards of carry. but it, it, mid to upper 190s for carry and then uh, total distance is usually around 215. Let's see how 5 iron does. Yeah well right off the bat you can see there's a higher ball flight a higher apex on this because it is weaker lofted. It's two degrees weaker than what I'm currently hitting and that's shown in the numbers. That was only a 181 carry and I thought I hit that well. Well, the club head speed's going up. Spin rate's going up. 186 carry, 199 total. Club head speed's going up though. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. But that distance is quite, quite a bit less than what I'm used to. It's funny, it comes off the club. It looks really good. It feels good. 184 carry. I'm only going to do a few more 5 iron. I, I see where this is going. That's about as good as I can hit this, I think, right there. <laughs> it was as good as I could hit it. Dead straight. 94, 95 mile an hour club head speed. 126 ball speed, 189 carry, 204 total. And that's as good as I can hit it. That's not even my averages. That's as good as I can hit it, I think. Let's try one more to see if I can do it twice in a row. Duplicate that result. Yep, 191. Well, upon further review, when I got here to my home office and I was getting ready to edit the video, I noticed that the full summary that I did down at Fiddler's Green on the Ping Blueprint Irons, the audio didn't work. So I'm back here in my home office and I'm gonna do my very best to kind of replicate the summary that I already had thought I had recorded for the Ping, Ping Blueprint Irons. Folks, simply put, I absolutely loved them. I thought they were just fantastic. And not, I, I don't want to hurt myself patting myself on the back, but, you know, as an eight handicap and, and, and hopefully going down, but as a guy that started the year as a 16, I didn't think I could play something that was more of a blade. I, you could make the argument that the pink blueprint isn't so much a blade as it is a muscle back, but right in that muscle back, you know, kind of blade family. Uh, I didn't think I could hit. I didn't think I had the, uh, a good enough swing. I didn't think I hit center of the face enough. I, I, I just didn't think I had the ability yet to be looking at an iron like that. And so I was just thrilled to death, uh, which could maybe be influencing my opinion of the iron. I was just thrilled that I could hit it and that I could hit it consistently well uh, to pretty good distances and in a really, really, really tight dispersion. So let's start kind of going through the list of all the different things that I examine when I'm reviewing an iron. Let's first start with looks. The looks of the Ping Blueprint iron, they were absolutely stunning. They had that bolt at the end, which is fine because, uh, you know, there's a number of clubs that have that technology in there. 
um, doesn't take away from the look of the club. And with the Ping Blueprint being more of a blade, folks, I think you'd be hard pressed to find any blade that isn't absolutely stunning. And the Ping Blueprint iron in the looks category did not disappoint. I love the font of the number on, you know, on the, uh, the sole of the club, both in the bag and in your hand, standing over the ball. They're absolutely gorgeous. And I think they look great. So in the looks category, they definitely check the box. What about feel? <sighs> the feel category. So the one thing I'll say about the Ping Blueprint irons is if you didn't strike it dead center in the club face, right in the small sweet spot, then it was pretty unforgiving. And it delivered in every way possible. It told you that you missed it, if, if you missed it. From the, the feeling and the sensation that you'd have in your hands, to the ball flight, to the yardage or distance carry, um, it, it told you in every single way you did not hit it well. And so it really was not forgiving. Now, I was really lucky. I was really lucky. I, you know, I've been really working hard on my swing. And so I really didn't miss it that often, as you may have seen in the video. I really didn't miss it that often. And so for me, it, you know, it performed very, very nicely. But I could see that if I wasn't on that day uh, or, you know, you're hitting off a mat. So if you start hitting out of harder conditions, different lies and everything, and if you ha happen to miss a shot, that club is going to penalize you. It really is. And so um, I'll kind of circle back to who the club is for. But that was something. So in terms of feel, when you hit it well, it felt absolutely amazing. But if you missed it, it feels absolutely terrible, which is to be expected of a blade or a, or a club like that, even a muscle back club, uh, an iron like that. It, it's to be expected. The feel is going to be much more sensitive to how well you're striking the ball. Now, remember, uh, that was in terms of how it was set up. It's a weaker lofted club um, than what I currently have in my bag with my RSI 2. So um, the distance dropped off a little bit. Now, on pitching wedge, actually, the distance is almost the same. It was within a couple of yards. When I jumped up to 7-iron, it dropped off a little bit. I think the drop-off on average was around 5 yards, but the spin rate was so much higher, uh, that wasn't a big deal. However, when I got to 5-iron, the drop-off was 10 yards, maybe even almost 12 yards of carry. Uh, whereas I'm used to carrying it almost 200 yards, this was down in the mid 185, 188 range, pretty consistently, and that's just not what I want. Uh, you could make, you could maybe do a couple of things. Number one, I could add a four iron to the set, but then I'm stuck with other decisions because if I want to stick with my three wedges in a, in run pitching wedge to four four iron then I'm probably going to have to pull one of my hybrids out of the bag, and I really don't want to do that. So it kind of puts me in a precarious position if I were to go with ping. Another thing that I was thinking about on my drive home was I could do a blended set where I could do the ping blueprint iron, say, up to, well, through 7-iron, and then maybe for my long irons, like 6-iron, 5-iron, maybe I could do a blended set and there would be maybe a different model of ping iron that I could go with that would maybe be a little bit more forgiving, a little more strong lofted and give me a little bit better distance. But by and large, guys, really not a lot of complaints. I really thoroughly enjoyed the ping blueprint irons. Who are they for? That's a tough one. And I, I, I say this in almost every iron review that I do, because in the first few iron reviews that I did, I caught a little bit of flack for saying that an iron was for a, uh, you know, a specific handicap or kind of type of player. And I caught a little flack for that because at the end of the day, and I say this on every review, it's all up to you. How did it perform to you? How did it feel to you? And that's, and that's really all that you can say. But what I will say is uh, as an eight handicap, I felt like I was probably as, how should I say, as inexperienced a golfer 
that could really reasonably play the ping blueprint iron. So if you are a high single digit handicap, certainly if you're a 10, 12, 15, or even into 20, I just couldn't see like a 10 to 20 or even higher handicapper playing that iron. So it probably, honestly folks, just wouldn't be the iron for you. I don't think it'll just provide enough distance. I don't think it'll be strong often enough. And I certainly believe that it won't be forgiving enough uh, based on the amount of times golfers maybe about of my ability or even a little bit worse than me, but the number of times that they all miss that, uh, you know, and miss shots, that ping blueprint is going to be really not very forgiving. Now, if you are a mid single digit handicapper to a low single digit or a scratch golfer or a plus handicapper, folks, you've got to give the ping blueprint a look. And as I said at the beginning of this video, you know, ping has for anything has never really been a brand that's really high on my list. But between its marketing and kind of reviews of different clubs and just watching uh, professional performance, some of the, the the list of names of professionals that are playing pings and playing, playing them really well, I finally decided to give the blueprints a look. And I'm really, really thankful and glad that I did. Now, one thing I will note is the ping blueprints are a fairly expensive iron. You know, there's different costs all over the country. Right now, they're in the fourteen to $1,500, and that's U.S. dollar, price point, which for those of you say in Great Britain in pounds, I think that's around 1200 pounds. So they're a pretty expensive iron. So if you're going to buy them, you better be doggone in love with them. Remember that I was using the dynamic gold shaft. I think if I got the blueprint irons, I would leave that shaft in there. It did come standard with the Taylor, or excuse me, with the Golf Bright al Align Grip. I hate the Align Grip. I will never, ever get the Align Grip again. So if I were to get those irons, I would probably get the, the Golf Pride Z or Z Grip and, uh, and not get the Align Grip that comes standard with those ping blueprint irons. Well, I love them. I absolutely love them. Now, lastly... Will they go in my bag? No, they will not. <laughs> nah, they, they just, um, I think I need something with a little tiny bit more forgiveness. And I, I'm willing to go with traditionally lofted irons. Uh, and, I, and I know, based on previous testing, that there are some more traditionally lofted irons that I get a little bit better distance out of than I did the ping blueprints. But I tell you what, it was a great experience to hit, hit them. And I absolutely loved them. So that is, folks, my review of the Ping Blueprint Irons. Now, if you haven't already and you've made it through the end of this video, folks, first of all, I hope you found value in it. Number one, that's the most important thing. I hope if, I hope, if you were considering this iron, I hope that there was value in seeing my very informal. Remember, I don't dive as deep into the numbers as some of the other club reviewers that are out there. I, I just don't get as technical in my reviews, but I do hope that this did provide some value and some helpful information for y'all. If you are still watching this video, I want to say as always, please click subscribe. I want to continue to bring content to y'all. I want to continue to bring some entertainment to you all uh, and some helpful tips as well as I continue on my own personal golf journey. So make sure and smash that subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss a lot of the future content that I have coming. Also, maybe give this video a like and comment below if you have already purchased or are considering the ping blueprint irons i would love for you to put some sort of comment down below about what your experience has been with them or what you whether you liked them or not heck even if you decided not to get them what you thought if you hit them if you have any thoughts at all on the ping blueprint irons i'd love to see your comments down below and if you know anybody that may be considering a ping iron or particularly the blueprint irons uh make sure and share this video to them Anyways, thanks everybody till I do the next video, whether it be a drill or a fun match or something out on the golf course or another club review. Until the next video, we'll talk to you guys later.